RAS is an important proto-oncogene. In fact, there are three different types, KRAS, HRAS, and NRAS. And for lung cancer in particular, we've known that KRAS hotspot mutations um, have existed since the, the late 90s. Uh, and this was prior to the discovery of EGFR, ALK, RET, ROS, et cetera. We know that KRAS, in terms of its normal biology, sort of functions as a sensor that integrates external stimuli in the wild type state uh, and then transduces those stimuli to the inside of the cell, thereby mediating processes such as cell growth and migration. We also know that KRAS in particular can cycle between two different states, the on state or the active conformation, if you will, and the off state or inactive conformation. And that cycling is uh, mediated in part by binding to molecules such as GTP um, when the protein shuttles between these different states. So there are certain molecular alterations that drive cancer, and our belief is that those molecular alterations occur at the very earliest onset of the disease, and therefore essentially all of the cancer cells have the same molecular alteration. Of those molecular the most frequent ones are KRAS, and these are felt to be driver oncogenes where all the cells have those particular KRAS mutations and they therefore are potentially susceptible to treatment uh, aimed at those particular alterations. Now, for every molecular alteration, there may be one, more than one molecular alteration that's a driver. For example, for EGFR, the most common molecular alterations are deletion 19 and a point mutation at L858R. But there are other molecular alterations in the EGFR family. And in a similar way, KRAS, there are more than one KRAS mutation that can drive the tumor. The most common is what we call KRAS G12C, but there are also KRAS G12B and other KRAS uh, G12 uh, mutations. And then there are KRAS mutations in other uh, places such as uh, Q61. But the most uh, common uh, are G12C. And the first specific KRAS treatment uh, that has been devised thus far are for KRAS G12C. Some lung cancers, <clears throat> the most common, have this uh, lysine substitution at G12C. And if one does <clears throat> any kind of specific KRAS mutation analysis or any next-gen sequencing analysis, one will find uh, which KRAS mutation there are, what there is, and whether it's uh, whether a G12C is, is present or not. And again, this is really important because just like in EGFR, uh, it may be that there are different drugs for different mutations. In KRAS, uh, <clears throat> as far as we know, the prognosis is fairly similar uh, across different KRAS mutations, uh, but the treatments may be completely different. So if we're doing an EGFR G719 uh, molecular change in EGFR, uh, typical drugs like osimertinib don't work so well, or allotinib don't work so well, so a fat med or decommitment tend to work better uh, in those. And so uh, for KRAS, it may be that for uh, KRAS G12B, we'll have different drugs than we will have for G12C. In fact, it's highly likely. But if you have a KRAS G12C mutation, all the cells will have that. And one, one treatment uh, will likely be uh, effective. Maybe that we need combinations in the future to prevent resistance. Uh, and we don't know how resistance is going to occur, but it's highly likely that a specific 
treatment won't kill all the cells, even though all the cells have that alteration. In terms of uh, the frequency of KRAS mutations, and in particular KRAS G12C, where there's a lot of exciting uh, uh, direct inhibitors in development, KRAS mutations comprise about 25% of all solid tumors on average, and and, and that's that's the same in, in uh, lung adenocarcinoma. Uh, about half of those mutations, about 13%, are, are, have the uh, KRAS G12C uh, amino acid substitution. So to put that in context of newly diagnosed non-small cell lung cancer, there's about uh, 228,000 new diagnoses of, of lung cancer per year estimated in the US with the, the majority of those with metastatic disease. So, you know, we're looking at tens of thousands of patients per year that could be impacted by these uh, direct KRAS inhibitor treatments. So uh, in terms of looking at that piece of pie of oncogene-driven subsets of non-small cell lung cancer, it's probably the largest piece of pie uh, that we could target. So it's exciting that we now have uh, uh, KRAS inhibitors in development in clinical trials uh, to address this large unmet need. In terms of KRAS mutations and other solid tumor types, um, their, their KRAS mutations uh, comprise about a quarter uh, of all um, mutations across solid tumors. It's frequently encountered in multiple cancer subtypes, such as colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, and others. Now, the frequency between G12C and other KRAS, other KRAS amino acid substitutions, and that proportion varies by tumor type. Uh, but KRAS mutations are, are, are encountered not uncommonly throughout a broad uh, spectrum of solid tumors.